What's up guys, in this video we're going to be making a laser door for our tycoon here. But before we get into making our laser door for our tycoon, there's an issue from the last episode that I need to go over right now. So inside of our workspace, inside of the explorer, you can open up the tycoons folder and open up our tycoon model inside of our tycoons folder. Next, open up our scripts folder right here and let's open up our core script and we need to go all the way down, not all the way down, but close enough to the bottom right inside of our buttons function. So what I did last time is I made it so that we check if a player owns a specific game pass ID, but what this is doing right now is it's checking if this player owns this game pass ID, then it's gonna basically make it so that any button with the game pass id value is going to be able to be bought with this one game pass id so instead of having our game pass id right here we want to say v dot game pass id dot value just like that right after our player dot user id and then we can copy this with control and c or you can right click and press copy and then we can go down here to this other game pass id and click on control v or paste our thing right here and that should fix this issue. So let's close off of the core script for now and now we can get to making our owner door. So let's go ahead and insert a brand new part. You can insert a cylinder, a sphere, it doesn't really matter what you do for your laser just as long as it is a separate part from your actual owner door. So I'm going to be adding in a part right here by clicking on this part button and then you can feel free to drag it around however you want to around your owner door. I'm just going to make it fit right along the side of it right here and I'm going to scale it down a bit and this is my little laser block so far. If you click on the laser block and then change the brick color to something like maroon, just like this. It does look a little ugly now, but if you change the material over to neon, you'll see that it looks much, much better. Now with this part, I'm going to duplicate it and move it up several times just like this to give the appearance of having multiple lasers here. You can make them evenly spaced out if you would like to, or at least try your best to. And then what we want to do is click on all of these with while holding shift, and that will select multiple parts at a time. And once you have all of these parts selected, you want to go up to the model tab right up here and then click on union. Now what this is doing is basically turning all those four parts that we had and it's combining them into this one part that we can move around. Next inside of the properties of our union right here, you want to turn on use part color. It's a little bool value inside of the data tab inside of our properties. Next what we want to do is insert a part right here once again and you can model this or change it however you want it to be. I'm just going to make it a perfect square or at least try to. Something like this looks pretty good. I'm going to change the color to a bright green like this. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit and let's go ahead and move it up, move it over, rotate it a little bit by using the rotate tool right up here. I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees right here so that that way we can put it onto the side of our wall here. Now if you have walls for your tycoon, this shouldn't be a problem if it's just floating right here. Normally you'd probably want to put it somewhere onto the wall, however I don't have walls for my tycoon just yet. But if you have walls, this shouldn't be a problem for you. Anyways, let's go ahead and group these together. So our little button right here and our lasers, so let's press Ctrl and G to group them together into a model. And let's rename this one to Owner Door, just like that. Next, we want to name our union, which is our laser part, to lasers, just like that and then our part over to button. Next, what we want to do is inside of our button, click on the plus icon to the right of that button and insert a click detector right here. What we're using the click detector for is basically going to be used for when the player will actually click on our button. 
so we can tell when they're going to click on it. And then we can run a signal off of that button being clicked to run a few functions off of that. So inside of our owner door model right now, click on the plus icon to the right of it and add in a script. We're gonna start off with a few variables right up here. So we're gonna say local lasers will be equal to script.parent.lasers. We're gonna say local button will be equal to script.parent.lasers button then we need to get the actual owner value from our tycoon value so what we're doing let's grab our owner door model right here one thing you're going to want to do is make sure that it has a primary part so that our button animation will work i'm just going to choose the button for my primary part make sure it's anchored as well and then we want to drag this owner door right into our purchased items folder right here Another thing you want to change the lasers to can collide being off just so that the player can actually pass through them. Anyways, back inside of our script right here, if I open up the owner door, you can see if I said local owner value will be equal to script.parent.parent. We're following all the parents right here. So if we say script.parent once, it's going to get to the owner door. If we say script.parent again, or just add another dot parent to the end of the first dot parent, it will go up to our purchased items folder. So we would need to go up one more time right here to get up to our tycoon model. Now that we've reached our tycoon model, we can say dot values just like that, and then our dot owner value just like that. Next, we're going to create a simple boolean variable for whether or not our door is going to be enabled or not. So we're going to say local enabled will be equal to true to start it off. So now we simply say button dot click detector dot mouse click. We're going to connect a function to that with two parentheses on the end, just like this. And this is going to take the player parameter. And if you look inside of the parameters right here, you can see that the player is the player who clicked the actual mouse detector. So now we're going to check if the owner value dot value equals equals to player then we're going to check if enabled, not enum, enabled, equals equals to true. Then we're going to set enabled equals to false. We're going to set our lasers dot brick color. And this will be equal to brick color dot new. And then I'm going to choose forest green for this. I think forest green works the best for neon colors. It kind of dulls down the glow effect that the neon material has, but it still looks very nice for a neon color. Then we set our lasers dot transparency, and this will be equal to something very, very almost invisible even. So we're gonna say 0 0.8 or something like that. You can choose to go 0 0.9, 0 0.7. You don't even have to change the transparency at all but I'm going to be leaving the transparency at 0.8. Next, we just say else. So if our enable does not equal equal to true, which means it equals to false or nil, then we're going to basically copy these lines right here, just like this, and we can paste them down right here. Except the only difference is that we're setting enabled equals to true. We're changing the brick color from forest green back to maroon and then we are setting the lasers transparency we just need to get rid of the dot eight so this is our function that will actually enable or disable our owner door however we still need to make it so that the player can actually take damage if they're invading another player's tycoon so let's go down a little bit right here drop a few lines and we're going to say lasers dot touched connect parentheses function, more parentheses right here, and this function is going to take the parameter of hit. And the hit parameter is basically whatever is touching our lasers at the time that this function is being called. So at this moment, let's say it was the player's left hand that ended up touching our laser, then this function is going to take the hit parameter, which is actually the player's character's left hand. So that's why we were able to get local player equals to game.players colon get player from character. And then we say hit.parent because if it was the left hand touching the laser and the left hand is a child of the character, 
then we can feel free to say hit.parent, which is actually the character that is being hit, or the character that actually hit the laser. Then we can get the player from that character just like this, and that's why this works so well. Then we can check if it is a player, then we're going to check if the owner value dot value does not equal to player, then we're going to say if enabled equals equals to true, then we're going to say player dot character find first child parentheses quotation marks humanoid with a capital H dot help will be equal to zero. So that means we're just going to basically instantly kill them if all of these qualities are set. So that is our entire script. Let's go ahead and run over it real quick. So this lasers variable right up here is directing right to our lasers instance right here, which happens to be a union inside of our model. And the button variable is doing the same thing, but for our button right here, the owner value was directing right towards our owner value inside of our values folder right here. And then this is a boolean variable that we are using to determine if the owner door is enabled or disabled. Right here, we are running a function for whenever a player clicks on our click detector that we stuck inside of our button. So if a player clicks on our button, we're going to connect a function and then we're going to check if the owner value is value equals to the player. So in other words, if the player owns the tycoon. Then we're going to check if the owner door is already enabled. Then we're going to set it to disabled and we're going to change the color and transparency of it. Otherwise, if enabled equals to false or nil or any other value, then we're going to set enabled equals to true and we're going to change the color and transparency once again. Down here inside of our label, Lasers function basically checking to what to see whether or not our lasers instance, which is our union inside of our owner door right here, has been touched. Then we're going to connect a function to that with the hit parameter. I was already explaining this a little bit earlier, but I'm going to go over that same kind of explanation to really, really root it inside of your brain. So let's say the player had their left hand touch the laser. What we're doing is we're getting the player's character from the hit.parent because the all of the player's limbs, their humanoid, their humanoid root part, everything that the player has is located inside of their character. And the character is what every single player has, it's pretty much what their player is made up of. So we're getting the player from that character from our player service inside of our game here. And then we're checking if that is a player, then we're going to check if that player owns the tycoon or if that player does not own the tycoon in this instance. And then we're checking if our enabled boolean equals to true, which means if our laser door is enabled, then we're going to basically get that player that touched the lasers right here. As long as they aren't the owner of the tycoon, then we're going to deal damage to them. And since up here we're checking if the owner value dot value equals to player, this will make it so that no one else can adjust whether or not the owner door is enabled or disabled. So let's go ahead and click on the X button right here to close off the script. And let's click on play here. So as you'll see that if I do not claim my tycoon yet and I touch this red stuff right here, you'll see that I will die. However, now that I've claimed the tycoon after my death, if I run through here, the red lasers no longer deal any damage to me because I own the tycoon. And if I wanted to click this button right here, you can see that it will change to green, which will allow any visitor to come into my base. However, if I want to go back to it being deadly, I can press the button one more time. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video just as much as I did, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'll see you later.